1963, Alfred Hitchcock produced one of his greatest works of cinema in The Birds, a psychological horror thriller based loosely around a novel written in 1952 by Daphne du Maurier. The film starred Rod Taylor, Tippi Hendren, Jessica Tandy, Suzanne Plachette and Veronica Cartwright. Although Hitchcock based the movie plot upon the narrative within the novel by Daphne du Maurier, he fleshed it out and made it more into a deeper dive than the initial story and resulted in the birds becoming Hitchcock's tour de force of Jungian psychology, especially in the context of archetypes and individuation. The movie begins in the early 1960s at a San Francisco pet store where a millionaire daughter of newspaper owner and socialite Melanie Daniels is to meet a lawyer who is looking to buy Lovebird's sister's 11th birthday. Mitch recognises Melanie from an unflattering incident reported in the newspapers concerning her activities during a scandalous event in Rome. Mitch then pretends to be a shop assistant and then a conversation ensues around some canaries. The symbolism here clearly being that both characters are like canaries in a coal mine. The initial meeting of the pair of them is setting the tone as a kind of a warning or precognition of the dangers to come. Although the dangers are as much psychological as they are caused by birds. Mitch leaves the store without buying anything. Melanie f- feeling somewhat guilty of how she treated him and perhaps finding him also attractive purchases the love's birds on his behalf and tries to deliver them to Mitch's apartment in San Francisco only to find out that he's away at the family's farm in Bodega Bay. Melanie drives there with the love birds and meets up with a local teacher called Annie Hayward. It turns out that Annie had previously dated Mitch but it ended due to Mitch's cold mother who disliked any woman coming into Mitch's life. The subtext here is that Annie is more akin to a maternal figure for Mitch rather than a girlfriend being in the context of the Jungian archetype a school teacher and the rivalry much further down beyond Oedipus complex or anger or jealousy towards the same parent. The underlying theme rather is rooted in the Jungian concept of the anima, which makes up the totality of the feminine unconsciousness and its psychological qualities that a man possesses. Hence, Annie, being the school teacher, represents a maternal rival to Mitch's mother, but also Mitch himself represents the suffocating power of his mother Lydia and her anima upon him. This is actually the element which drives Melanie to bring the two lovebirds to Bodega Bay. A resolving of the anima and animus within her, which is subconsciously reflected by the pair of lovebirds. Upon reaching Bodega Bay, Melanie rents a boat and crosses over the water to the opposite side to discreetly leave the lovebirds at the Brenner's farm. The Sharon symbolism of the Greek crossing the river Styx is also highly prevalent here. Melanie is not going to come back across the bay the same person she was as she went over. Mitch spots Melanie rowing back to Bidega Bay and as she approaches the wharf a seagull attacks her. Mitch, who happened to be standing on the wharf during the attack, is both surprised and horrified, but also puzzled as to why the seagull would attack Melanie. Inside the cafe, Mitch tends to Melanie's wounds. And then Mitch's mother arrives after seeing Mitch's car outside the cafe. Melanie returns to Annie's house and asks to spend the night. At this point, the two women bond in terms of their relationship with Mitch, and both convey an element of not being fully romantically involved and it's more a case of completing psychological needs in both of them rather than a straightforward romantic liaison on the behalf of either woman. Back at the Brenner farm Lydia's hens suddenly are refusing to eat. 
This indicates that the maternal integration of the household is psychically disrupted by the presence of a sudden arrival of another powerful but psychically unresolved female entering into the equation. Melanie is also becoming something of a surrogate emotional mother to Mitch's young sister, Kathy, while she herself is on the cusp of womanhood. This is also another powerful factor. Melanie is comfortable with the role, while Lydia becomes increasingly uncomfortable as she's losing her dominant maternal grip on the household and psychically the integration maintained by her in the wake of her late husband's debt upon the family and in particular her relationship with Mitch is beginning to shatter. Privately, Lydia expresses her disapproval surrounding an exaggerated incident in the newspapers in Rome and conveys her disapproval to Mitch. Nevertheless, Mitch calls Melanie and invites her to Kathy's birthday party being held the next day. Shortly thereafter, there is a violent crash and a seagull is found at the doorway to the Brenner home. A dead gull on the threshold. And the threshold becomes a recurrent theme in the movie. The portal between the psychic and the material. And this image of the seagull dead at the threshold in the Brenner house as a psychic augury is perhaps Lydia's late husband's soul. At Kathy's birthday party, Melanie privately tells Mitch about her troubled past. The event, which caused great scandal amongst San Francisco's high society, was exaggerated by the rival newspaper owner in order to embarrass her father and family. Nevertheless, the incident involved Melanie submerging in the water of a fountain in Rome and then coming out and realizing that her values were different. A very common motif within classical pagan mythology. The hero, literally, submerging into the water and committing an act of psychic suicide, only to return to the surface with a newfound set of values. In this case, Melanie seeking a mother, as her own mother, as she tells Mitch, had left her at the same age as Kathy in order to run off with another man. During the party, the children are violently attacked and injured by seagulls. And that following evening, as Melanie dines with the Brenners, sparrows swarm into the house through the chimney, another portal. We're now being told that reality is now reversing. A chimney is used for the removal of forces from a house. And here are the sparrows swarming down the chimney to indicate that reality has now switched. This is not only reflecting the relationship between the humans and the birds of Bodega Bay, but also Melanie's and the character's overall shift in priority and values. That following morning, Lydia the mother visits her neighbour and discovers that the man is lying dead with his eyes removed from his corpse, the bit pecked to death by birds. She flees in horror. The reality is she's seeing herself and her inability to accept Melanie for what she is. She is much more comfortable with the concept of Melanie of being a straightforward attractive girlfriend of Mitch and not her replacement as a maternal anima figure. While Lydia is recuperating at home from the shock, she suddenly fears for Kathy's safety, almost like a premonition. And so Melanie offers to pick her up at the school. She arrives at the school in the middle of a singing lesson and Annie tells her to wait outside in what has become perhaps the movie's most famous scene as large crows or ravens begin to assemble behind Melanie as she waits for Kathy to leave the school. She looks around and now anticipating a violent attack by the crows, she warns Annie in the classroom and they evacuate the children by running down the hill back into Bodega Bay 
the crows begin a terrifying scene of attacking, injuring several children. During the chaos, once again, Mitch finds Melanie at the restaurant and a powerful scene ensues where a mother with two children but no man around doesn't want to hear about the attacks of birds and gulls. She behaves as if she didn't want her children to hear the stories as it might frighten them. But again, like Lydia seeing the corpse of the eyeless neighbor, it's her own internal world and the lack of no husband around is what is driving her terror and motivations in disrupting these discussions taking place at the bar inside the restaurant. As the chaos ensues outside, spilled gasoline ignites, causing an explosion and increases the terror even more within the locality. Melanie takes refuge in a telephone booth and this represents she's held in by the thresholds around her, four glass walls. She's trying to communicate with the outside world, but the telephone boot is battered constantly by seagulls. Eventually, Mitch rescues her, and they get back inside into the restaurant. At this point, she then turns into be something of a witch among the locals, as a distraught woman blames her for the attacks, which had happened as soon as her arrival in Bodega Bay. And the irony of this scene is it's completely true, even though she had no intention to cause disruption or psychic chaos within Bodega Bay. Mitch and Melanie then go to Annie's house to fetch Kathy. They find Annie's body outside killed by the crows while protecting Kathy. And this becomes one of the most powerful and sad scenes within the whole movie. Melanie says to Mitch, you can't possibly leave her body outside there. And the distraught Mitch picks up Annie's corpse as a newlywed husband would with his bride and carries her across the threshold into the house symbolically telling us that that was the woman that Mitch should have married and Mitch being prompted to do this by Melanie knows that she feels the same way that Annie was Mitch's true partner in life Melanie is looking for something in Bodega Bay and it has nothing to do with Mitch or any romantic intentions towards him. That evening, Melanie and the rest of the Brenner family barricade themselves inside the family home by nailing boards and furniture up against the doors and windows. Soon waves of birds begin attacking the house. Several points nearly get in. It's ironic that Mitch is the one who has to try and fight them off and become injured doing so. In the normal psychedelic state during a quiet lull, Melanie ascends a staircase, almost like a tower, to a fluttering sound in the attic. This represents her going into her own subconscious mind, but with a sense of contemplation, understanding and seeking wisdom, rather than a denial. In the attic, the birds begin violently attacking Melanie where she's trapped and faints into a kind of ecstatic state like the images of famous Christian artworks such as the statue of Saint Teresa. The family then decide to leave the house. Mitch goes outside and readies Melanie's car for their escape. But the birds remain docile, menacing yet not attacking, almost if warning Mitch, careful how he approaches the remainder of his own story. Lydia, at this point, is showing great affection and compassion towards Melanie as she's healing her wounds. Melanie, at the same time too, is finding the mother that she'd lost when she was 11 years old. She has become Kathy. Kathy has become her Lydia has restored herself back to a proper maternal figure. Melanie has rounded out her own life in terms of an individuation, finding the forgotten anima within her, and Mitch becomes a true hero. He's not saving the family 
for his own romantic or sexual desires for the ownership of Melanie. He's doing it in order to heal the pain and trauma of everyone involved from his little sister all the way up to his mother. Mitch becomes something of a psychological catalyst. The car radio reports that board attacks on nearby communities such as Santa Rosa are happening and that the military is now involved. The collective unconscious is being revealed here. Melanie is not a standalone individual in this story. What her experiences are, represented by the waves of bird attack spreading, is a growing sense within similar women in her situation who have lost their mothers, or women such as Lydia who have not fulfilled correctly their role as mothers, are being caught up in a wave of Jungian expressions of the anima spreading across the collective unconscious of nearby towns and through the region as a whole. Under protest from Lydia, Cathy retrieves the lovebirds from the house in their cage and joins Mitch and Lydia as they carefully escort Melanie through the perching birds and into the car. The car drives away as thousands of birds remain near motionless, ominously perched and watching the Brenners in their car, almost again as if a warning to make sure they are being watched. And that's what the birds represent, the subconscious watching and ready to attack if we stray from the path of our own hero's journey. Inside the car, Melanie's anima has been resolved. Lydia now has a chance to begin again as a more secure and aware mother as they embrace each other in the back seat. Individuation, under the moonlight which itself represents the cycle of womanhood. Hitchcock was very well aware of the psychological subtleties and undercurrents which drive humans and these were constantly brought into his movie but perhaps the birds represent this this path of his artistic expression best of all the birds represent the explosions of psychic forces coming up from below or in this case from above into an individual not completely on the path to individuation and rounding out correctly one's life. And the birds could also simply represent slang for women, as in woman trouble. And that's really the story of this film. A classic case of as above, so below.